सोच में सकारात्मकता लाएं, जीवन को बेहतर बनाएं। मनोदर्पण पर कॉल लगाएं, मनोबल अपना और बढ़ाएं। मनोदर्पण पर कॉल लगाएं, मनोबल अपना और बढ़ाएं। चलो आज ही प्रण ले हम, मानसिक स्वास्थ्य सुधारे हम। चलो आज ही प्रण ले हम, मानसिक स्वास्थ्य सुधारे हम। मनोदर्पण के काउंसलर से परामर्श पाने के लिए डायल करें टोल फ्री नंबर 844 नंबर एक बार फिर सुने 844-844-0632 नमस्कार आप सभी का बेहद स्वागत है हमारे CIET NCRT के लाइव फोन एंड इंटरैक्टिव स्पेशल प्रोग्राम कॉल्ड सहयोग गाइडेंस फॉर मेंटल वेल बीइंग ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन माय नेम इज तानवी खुराना एट दिस मोमेंट यू वाचिंग अस ऑन ईविदया चैनल नंबर 6 टू चैनल नंबर 12 the topic that we are going to discuss today is home environment for school examination. So students prepare for their examination, but how good or how bad is the home environment for these children? We have a lot to discuss regarding this topic. If you have any questions, any queries, please reach out to us. You can simply call us on our number, which is 8800 and if you are watching us uh, on our YouTube channel, that is NCERT official, then in the live chat box, you can write down your questions, queries and share them with us. Apart from this, if you want to email us, the email ID would be sayog.ncert at the rate ciet.nic.in. You can even see the email ID written on your screens as well. We have two guests with us. Let me please introduce our first guest to all of you. We have with us Mr. K. Madhu. Sir, a very warm welcome to you. Namaste, ma'am. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Sir is a teacher counselor, and along with him, we have one more expert, and she is Dr. Sujata B. Hanchinalkar. Ma'am, a very warm welcome to you as well. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Ma'am is from Regional Institute of Education, NCERT Mysuru. And I welcome both of you once again in this conversation regarding home environment for school examination. So without further ado, let's begin with this conversation. And my first question would be to Sujata Ma'am. Ma'am, would you like to tell us that how does the home environment affect a student's focus and uh, studying for examination? Thank you, Tanviji, for the question. And uh, we all know that uh, our Honorable Prime Minister has been talking a lot on the examination. Pariksha Pe Chacha is something which is very well appreciated. And uh, we do know that examination is something that is uh, something that is in our country considered as more of an evil kind rather than something the child should uh, appreciate, child should enjoy what learning has taken place. But examination brings in a lot of stress, not only for the child, but also for the family. So let us just find out what exactly is the home environment, how it should be and what should happen with the home environment. These are certain things that one should worry about and one should think about how we should make the environment conducive for the children. What exactly happens at the home is we do know that now we have moved towards a nuclear family, but still when we consider, consider the home environment for the child, when you consider especially the physical setting, we should know that the child must have a very comfortable uh, seat seating place for himself whenever that also means that we should create a study space for a child and that study space must be quiet and it should be organized and you should let the child organize the place as per the child's choice so this should also involve the minimum distractions that are there as such as there may be noise, there may be a lot of clutter on the table. These are the things that add to the distractions uh, that the child may have as such. And there must be a proper lighting, comfortable seating for the child to sit for the longer duration. Then there is something called as familiarity and comfort. That means the child should feel secure, familiar to the space that he uses on a or she uses on a daily basis. It should promote a positive mindset among the children. Wherever they are creating a study space, that should be something that the child should choose and child should feel very familiar and secure. Apart from that, 
uh, the home environment also should make things very very comfortable for the child familiarity with the surroundings is, is most important be it home be it hostel wherever the child is there for the examination uh, time the child space that is created for the child to study must be very very comforting and emotional climate we all know that there is a lot of stress that is there during the period and a parent or wherever the child is there must be support and encouragement for the child this plays a crucial role on the student's focus how he is focused on what he has to complete a supportive atmosphere and whenever a child completes a task there must be reinforcement this is something that i feel that most of the children are lacking in the aspect of when it comes to motivate them if the child has to be feeling motivated the motivation even though it is intrinsic but there are a lot of factors which are extrinsic also for example the kind of reinforcement that the parent or the whoever is looking after the child should keep on what should happen whenever a complete study schedule is prepared for the child one should ensure that if the child stick to the study schedule the content that the child has to complete the parent or whoever is caring for the child must be able to appreciate the child so that the positive reinforcement is there and the child keeps continued efforts for completing the task kept for that day then we should also be not creating stress in the mind of the child that he is not able to focus on something so the parent must sit with the child what is the condition under which the child is working where is the distraction is there a distraction from the peer group or is there any other distraction or is there any other stress because most of the time during the adolescent phase we do know that there is a lot of peer influence that is there and this peer influence definitely leads to the stress among the children and there is some amount of eu stress that is always there and we also say that this eu stress is something which is a positive stress and it must be there so that the given task can be completed within the scheduled time so the study habit that the child forms the content that is assigned as per the timetable the child should be able to complete without much be stress being support given to the child and child should be able able to do based on his individual efforts rather than the parent forcing him to complete the given task within that time frame what can be set aside is okay this is the time frame that you have put let us see how much time will you take to complete so the small little challenges that the parent provides also should be reinforced by telling this yes you have done better but you still can improve this is the kind of positive env environment that the parent can provide at home and this adds to the effort of the child that is there and there should not be anything that distracts the child or the concentration is affected for example there may be a joint family or there may be four or five members in the family one wants to watch a television or wants to put on some music so we should be considerate towards the child who is having examination so others who are there in the family should be more accommodative they cannot have what they want to immediately because we have to consider the environment that we are trying to create for the child yes tanvish right ma'am ma'am you have already been pointed a few points uh, that what all can parents do to uh, create a healthy good study environment uh, for the children who are studying at home for the examinations i would request you to add a few more points here please yeah thank you when it comes to certain other aspects that we have to see what are the other aspects that are related to creating this study space then also trying to find out what are the other supportive things that the parent can do for example we already talked about that there must be a separated dedicated study space if it is possible a child who is having examination or who is uh, facing board examination can if at all they get a separate room fine if they are not able to at least a proper space where child can sit and study that must be created at home or wherever the child is there so a dedicated study space allows the child to concentrate sit in one space and work 
on whatever the task he has to uh, complete. Apart from that, there are few other important aspects. For example, there are certain essential materials that we have to provide to child. For example, there are resource books that are required. There are other stationaries that are required. There are textbooks that are required. There are some reference materials that are there. These things should be very neatly organized on the study space wherever the child is there so that there is a minimum distraction when the child is doing his work or has dedicated his time in completing the uh, task related to the academics. We have to uh, definitely develop a study schedule. This is something that is very, very difficult for the parents. But if you develop a habit, which uh, if you develop right from early childhood stage, the schedule developing, sticking to the schedule that is there, keeping time for the studies on everyday basis and then consistently when they move forward in their higher classes by the time they reach the board exam a proper study schedule must be prepared and child should be able to follow the study schedule on his own and there must be consistency in following the study schedule which later establishes a discipline among the child to complete task within the time limit that is time frame that is being given. As I told earlier, positive enforcement can be in many ways. It need not have to be only this way that, okay, everybody talks in terms of only scoring marks. It can also in terms of the kind of understanding that the child has developed. If the parent is able to understand that, one should be able to support doing that and appreciate the child. There may be possibility that you may have to go keep in eye on what is being completed how much you keep checking how much things has he be able to complete whether there is certain things that the child is finding it difficult we have to find out what is the cause sit and discuss positive reinforcement you keep giving to child that yes if at all you are not able to do within this time frame probably you need more time for this so they should be able to differentiate between what time I can give for certain content and what time I can give for the contents where there is a lot of difficulty or hard areas what we call them. Then minimize distractions as I told there will be a lot of people in the family and we have got to look into aspects like uh, are there any electronic devices we know the impact of the electronic devices and social media on the young children now and we definitely have to minimize this distraction or accessibility to these distractions that are there during this examination time and it is for the parents as well as the school to look into that these distractions are being told to children that when they have got to study for the examination they have got to schedule their time and give certain uh, specific timing even for these electronic devices or the social media that the children are engaging do not just alienate them from these uh, social media. Let them give 15-20 minutes of that in a day. You should not completely take away that because they also need some kind of entertainment, entertainment, relaxation during the period. But that distraction that is there should not be continued. So the child must be sticking to the study schedule and also taking his relaxation time and giving him an option of what relaxation a child would like to have. Does he want to go play out or does the child wants to have some time spending on the social media or go and interact with the family members. This uh, practice of examination timing and should not alienate the child from his peer group or from the family. He should be connected to all. If possible, you should also entertain his a peer group to come interact there must be group study if it is happening but under the close monitoring of the parents the supportive atmosphere is something where parental monitoring is always there then monitor the stress levels usually we think that child is sitting in front of the book that means child is studying no we have to find out whether child is under some kind of stress there may be anxiety some children go into depression. These are the things. My examination anxiety would be there. I have, we have had examples of undergraduate students having uh, anxiety. Then we can imagine the adolescent uh, children. 
we have to keep a lot of uh, monitoring on their stress level if it is you stress some small amount of stress is always required for completing the any given task be it adults be it children a small amount of stress that you call as a u stress which is a positive stress is required for writing an examination or completing any kind of task and the stress level should not cross beyond a certain point it should only help them to complete the task but it should not result in the anxiety promoting good healthy habits that means there must be regular breaks the child must be eating properly there is a problem with the adolescents or any pe people who are having a lot of anxiety they would starve they would not give time to eat so if that happens then there would be a lot of other health issues that the child would be facing so one must monitor that proper nutrition is followed during the period that the child is giving for the study that is there and during that you must the child must be giving some breaks to take liquids as well as a nutrition that is required proper food must be monitored and the balanced diet of the child must be taken care of and snacks or something that is unhygienic or those who are not considered healthy such kinds of food must not be given to children during the examination at least one must take care that we must as a parent or as an adult we must promote healthy habits and these healthy habits are going to promote a good habit of forming a study schedule and discipline among the children yeah, okay Sanmiti. thank you thank you so much ma'am for explaining each and every point in detail and i'm sure the parents who are watching this program they are going to follow these steps and they are going to provide a healthy a good and a very nice uh, a home environment for their children who are studying at home thank you so much ma'am once again My next question is to sir uh, sir would you like to tell us that how does the organization of a student's study uh, study space impact their exam performance Yes uh, thank you so much for the question ma'am mm -hmm. and uh, I also want to thank uh, Dr Sujata ma'am for providing the background information So uh, this is something very important uh, that is organization of student study space actually learning takes place only when the student feels comfortable there should be a proper space which is very much organized and how it should be organized let us discuss let me tell you there are various ways through which we can you know we can organize the study space of children like for example as ma'am already discussed there shouldn't be any distraction we should at most we should uh, reduce the distraction for the student like ma'am already discussed about the electronic gadgets or some other siblings who wants to play or who wants to you know uh, do some activity which may disturb the child who is actually pre preparing for the exams there shouldn't be any uh, such kind of disturbance and also apart from electronic gadgets apart from other siblings there is something else called sports or music or a music instruments or sports instruments which will be, which where our students will be very fond of to use so these materials these things shouldn't be nearby while preparing for the, while preparing for the examination because they also distract the students and uh, when when you when you ensure this kind of distractors are our you no know, away from the student it enhances the efficiency of the student efficiency in the sense the concentration is more because they don't have any distractions they can focus better on the content that they are learning so their learning enhances the quality of learning enhances and also while managing all this when you have a structured and organized learning space that means structured means you know where your uh, uh, rough notebooks are you know where your uh, fair notebooks are you know where the textbooks are you know where your uh, you know uh, pen pe pencils or pens whatever the structure that is required you don't have to search whenever you know you are in urgency and you keep searching and waste lot of time so that all that shouldn't happen so when it, when it is an organized space you actually uh, you know uh, manage a lot of time and you save the time during your examination preparation and all this you know leads to reducing in stress and anxiety because you don't have any distraction you are properly in a you know properly sitting in a good space good environment and you're doing you're doing better so your focus is there you have good concentration so there is no need to feel that you, you know you're lacking time and you, you have to fear about your examination which is coming just uh, you know in the next few few days and also all these uh, the distractions or efficiency or time management they also improve or they also you know help in more uh, you know quality uh, information retention because there are no there are no uh, distractions efficiency is there so obviously what you learn will retain your brain properly 
and it also provide and uh, there should be a comfortable atmosphere as ma'am also discussed there should be a study space like uh, also it uh, there should be some infrastructure for the child if possible he can like they can sit on the floor or they can sit on the table comfortably or a chair they should have a proper light as ma'am discussed and they should have um, proper you know uh, like uh, water water also they should like in between they have to sip some water because water helps in between to retain uh, the concentration and also facilitating goal setting so when you are so when you maintain all these things you are, your mind is very clear you are very focused your concentration is better so when the mind is like this very calm and clear that helps that helps for goal setting a proper goal setting so these are the few ways with which we can ma'am uh, actually organize our study space which will help the child to you know incorporate and uh, study better for their examination okay so uh, we would like to ask you one more thing in what ways uh, do the emotional aspects of the home environment influence a student's mindset during the examination yes ma'am so ma'am apart from all this that we discussed let it mm. be the atmosphere let it be the infrastructure that we are providing let it be books that we are giving apart from all this this is very much important the major aspect that will contribute to the uh, student's performance because there is a lot of relationship uh, between how the student feels whether he is sad whether he is good there is a good mood or this his emotional state will definitely matter uh, to perform in his uh, examination like for example in indian context if you see most of the parents i mean i'm not saying parents won't sit to the uh, sit with the children but most of the indian uh, households won't sit with the child and understand them uh, you know ask their fears ask their concerns before they solve any problem so it is very important to provide the emotional support to the children during their examination because this is this is the time where they feel lot of anxiety lot of fear you know ma'am already told uh, they go into depression because we can see the suicidal uh, cases also because of these uh, examinations and all so there are few aspects few emotional aspects that we need to provide to the students uh, you know inside the inside the uh, <clears throat> inside the home like for example positive reinforcement mom already told we should appreciate the child's achievement whatever his child uh, is putting that effort that we are that that effort we can see among you know among the children we have to appreciate it whether it is less or more we should appreciate it that is one thing and open communication which is not actually happening in the indian context parents parents or teachers we have to sit with the children because they don't we, we don't know what they are going through we don't know whether they are scared of the examination whether they are preparing properly or they uh, scared of any subject most mostly you know most of the children will be scared of maths or any other subject so that open communication with the children will let you know the their uh, you know uh, their insecurities their insecurities regarding any subject or any content all these things so open communication should be there to understand their concerns to fears so that we can resolve them and emotional support so when you do this positive reinforcement and open communication it is like it is actually like providing an emotional support to them emotional support in the sense not it's not like we have to show the sympathy towards them that they are feeling bad and they are not able to perform better it is being empathetic towards their feelings it is actually uh, keeping us in their shoes and understanding their fears and insecurities next is reducing anxiety levels so obviously when you're communicating with them openly when you're reinforcing them when you're providing that you know when you feel empathy towards them they feel very you know they feel very good you know they feel they they're feeling uh, they feel appreciated they're being valued so their anxiety levels go down because they're getting some support they're getting some help from you know parents or teachers and setting realistic expectations obviously uh, every parent every teacher expects a lot from the students but how is that expectation what is the quality of the expectation is it realistic or unrealistic what do you mean by realistic here realistic in the sense in the sense expecting from their own you know way like for example a student is performing uh, in a examination he gets 30 out of uh, 30 out of 100 suddenly you can't expect uh, 80 more 80 or 90 marks out of 100 from the from the student it is very unrealistic because the growth is very gradual we improve step by step 30 40 50 60 like that we do so realistic expectation slowly so we can't just expect a student to perform just like that you know in a better way in one in one go so a realistic expectation which are possible so that is what is very important and cultivating growth mindset so what do you what do you, what do you mean by growth mindset here is we should learn from mistakes so we should teach the we should teach the learners 
to to accept their mistakes and learn from them it's not like you have done a mistake and you are you are wrong uh, you are not fit for anything no it shouldn't be like that so teachers and parents they should help the students to understand their mistakes and resolve them and uh, we should tell them it is okay to commit mistake because we get to learn a lot through the mistakes then promoting well being so uh, with this reinforcement that communication are providing support so all this will definitely help the student to maintain their you know a sound a mental uh, uh, mental strength and which will also help them physically and celebrating achievements which is very important those to like many of the times what we do we like parents or teachers are not actually um, satisfied with the student's performance so we say ah oh, okay fine no problem like we have done good job no it shouldn't be like that it is like whatever the little achievements whether the achievement is good or bad uh, sorry uh, it is less or more we should appreciate that whether it is small every small milestone should be appreciated or it is celebrated then only they feel yeah i am being valued my performance is being valued my effort is being valued that's how we can boost their confidence in lot of ways and confidence is very key in performing better not only in examination in any aspect so like these are the different emotional aspects which a parent or any uh, uh, teacher or any neighbor can could provide to the students so that they can perform better so i feel these are very important which we are not doing in our indian context we are doing but most of the households should follow all these things so that they can help their children to perform better in their life and uh, in examinations thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much sir and uh, i really think that most of the households will follow these and uh, the students will give a better performance in their school examination and uh, once they create uh, a good healthy home environment for their children thank you thank you so much sir and ma'am for being with us today it was a wonderful conversation and uh, it was a pleasure to have you on this platform thank you so much thank you thank you so much ma'am Thank you to all the viewers as well for being a part of this program. I really think that you enjoyed it. And uh, if in case you have missed watching this program, you can watch it again on NCERT official. That is our YouTube channel. So with this, we are wrapping up this particular program and also our today's programs as well. Tomorrow we'll come back again with more programs on our E with their channels and also on our YouTube channel. So you can watch them on these channels. Apart from this, uh, before leaving, just want to announce once again. Again, that uh, CIET and CERT is happy to announce the All India Children's Educational E-Content Competition for this year, that is 2023-2024. If you are a teacher, teacher educator, student, or independent educational e-content creator, we invite you to send in your best e-content for the competition. For more details and the registration form, you can visit the activity section of our official website, that is. ciet.ncert.gov.in or simply scan the qr code given on the screen the last date for sending your entries is 20th of january 2024 so all the very best and please do send your entries with this we are wrapping up our particular program called sayog guidance for mental well being of the children i'm tanvi kurana i'll take a leave of you have a great evening ahead namaskar सोच में सकारात्मकता लाएं, जीवन को बेहतर बनाएं। मनोदर्पण पर कॉल लगाएं, मनोबल अपना और बढ़ाएं। मनोदर्पण पर कॉल लगाएं, मनोबल अपना और बढ़ाएं। चलो आज ही प्रण ले हम मानसिक स्वास्थ्य सुधारे हम चलो आज ही प्रण ले हम मानसिक स्वास्थ्य सुधारे हम मनोदर्पण के काउंसिलर से परामर्श पाने के लिए डायल करें टोल फ्री नंबर आठ चार चार आठ चार चार शून्य छ तीन दो नंबर एक बार फिर सुने एट फोर फोर एट फोर फोर जीरो सिक्स थ्री टू